What's up? Name's Rack. I'm my coach, and this is the roast. Welcome to an edition of Patch Talk. I'm gonna have a look at uh, <clears throat> the latest Valorant patch notes, patch 1.07. I'm gonna have a peek through the changes here and just comment on how it may affect the meta at the pro level and at the competitive uh, like Q level, and see what to expect from the future. Now, I didn't. I have not been doing a lot of like Valorant content just purely because there's a lot of um, there's a lot of specifics that kind of come about for when patches come out. So this is actually one of the first real full patches that has existed in the um, the Valorant eco space. So I'm very happy to like go ahead and do like more patches like this, assuming that there actually is more things to like comment on. It's a bit difficult to really sort of like give insight when the patches are only so small and I can basically get the whole thing out in one tweet. But since there's a little bit more to this one and there's a little bit extra to sort of talk about, I'm going to try and talk at length in my own head about some things that I'm seeing or thinking of and like all the changes that are coming into this sort of patch. Now, um, I had a peek of it before, so there's no like raw reaction to it this time, but it will, it will take me a second to like remember my reactions to it. I'll let you, I'll fill you in as, as we go along. Um, yeah, we'll just jump into it then, shall we? So, yeah, first full patch that exists. So Kill Get, Killjoy gets a first major update. Empowers more counterplay against the Nano Swarm. Sounds like a good idea. As well as reduced damage. Viper Breach, Sova, and Sage also get some worthy changes to note as well. All shotguns get their aim punch and tagging tuned. Ooh, sounds like a good patch so far. You can choose to remake a match under certain circumstances. Lots of tweaks to observers. And you get some new features that should help you keep your identity private. Ooh, yes please. This patch is also part of the ongoing follow-through on a promise to improve hit registration clarity with several changes coming to the VFX of hit impact markers. So where I remember a lot of people talking about this as well is that hit impacts are a little bit difficult to sort of manage, figure out, and whether or not your hit is registering is a bit hard to figure out. Uh, there's That post is there. Um, I've only taken like a brief look at it myself, but there's a lot of talks about this that hit registration. It's been about for, when was this article posted? Two months ago? No, last month, sorry. I forgot these are written in American <laughs> American dates. But yeah, so last month they posted an article about that to like discuss that in depth. And there was a few like good insights to work with, but there's obviously a lot of things that um about the way the game's designed and so on and so forth that are kind of go under the radar. So don't worry about it too much, but we'll see where we go from here. So yeah, let's get into it. Agent updates. So first on the list is Sage. So Sage, heal reduced from 100 over 5 seconds to 60 over 5 seconds. That's basically halved, almost. Self-heal is reduced from 100 over 5 seconds to 60 over 10 seconds. So it's even longer for yourself. It actually gives out the healing for other people. Now, the thing about this, right, and a lot of people were really, like, not catching this, but healing in any shooter is a troublesome, like, mechanic to throw in there. Now, at the beginning of, of the game and, like, the ecosystem that it was trying to sort of thrive on, the, the big sort of note is that, obviously, we were trying to avoid the idea that utility would overtake the process of how... Uh, like we don't, we don't want utility to overtake the game. We don't want it to be like too focused on things like utility. Now that is a bit awkward given the state of Sentinels at the moment, but we'll get to that later. But the big problem at release and in beta was that Sage was one of the like most uh, what's the word I'm looking for disruptive. I think characters. Sage really took out like a lot of a lot of things from the FPS sort of ecosystem that we're like used to and that sort of environment that we're like relying on where you like play your angles, play your lines and like properly, you know, do your peaks around corners and really like duff the enemy's chances of getting around that. And that kind of that was made difficult for characters like uh, against when you were playing against Sage because there were a lot of things that would just be reworked or removed that made it really difficult to work with. So a lot of it came down to just her kit was just too robust and it just took away too many things available. The heal was part of that because if since the Phantom was the strongest gun in the game, but it still had problems where obviously you'd bink someone and they wouldn't get a they wouldn't get killed instantaneously and they you know they peek away and they run away from the peak which is probably a smart thing to do but if it's against like if you're against a sage and that's the person you bink they just heal themselves and it's just like oh well that like there's no there wasn't like a huge payoff for the rest of the round where you were like well i've done this damage that damage doesn't stay in there there's no way that like we know that we can press the advantage and that was kind of the troublesome thing about healing in general and it's not like 
And it's not like the other hills that are in the game, like Phoenixes, for instance, where, or like, or Rainers, if we're going to go into that sort of link, where like you have to spend the utility like straight up to like really lose it. Like, like Phoenixes, you have to put the Molotov down in a crappy spot if you're going to heal. Or if you're like, if you're Rainer, you have to have already gotten the kill in order to do that. Like, you don't just not get punished for doing something silly or like for getting caught out or getting outplayed. And you don't just walk off and go, well, that happened. I'm just going to heal myself. And that's shitty. And, like, the amount of solo play that came about that, it's not good for, like, competitive queue as a thing. Because most Sage players that you run into in ranked queue were just, like, awfully greedy about it. And it was never, like, great. So it's nice that it gives out healing to other people. But the biggest thing, and this is, like, one of the things that's ever happened in Rainbow Six, if you're aware of it, is that, like, where Doc was prevalent was purely because, like, the healing dart that was available and the way that it worked and the amount of, like... Uh, the, especially when it came to reviving people as well, like people were getting revived and doing silly peaks and stuff like that, and just getting revived to like half health rather than getting revived to twenty health, which is what it is now. Like that was still some things that were like really bad in that sort of spot. So I think de incentivizing healing generally is always a good idea, and making it so that it's not such a gigantic like stopper to oh I got outplayed. Um, I'm just gonna just gonna heal and that and that'll like basically band aid it quite well. Like I think it's too good of a band aid for that, and that's why characters like uh, that's why sorry players like sick for instance who like he does like really good aggressive play right, but there are some instances where that should be punished where he like you know he makes this aggressive play and then he heals up and then he can go for it again. That's not like what that's not a good idea. It's not a good like play for the. It's not good for the the health of the game, is the main thing I'm talking about, right? Now, I, like I said, I'm not saying that, like, Sage is an overpowered character. Like, she's seeing much less play in the pro circuit by default. But <clears throat> I think just in the grand scheme of things, especially if there are other characters that are going to, like, come into the game that do have healing or healing utility, this will become, like, a problem over time. So I think for the health of the game, this is a good idea. And plus, having the ability, like, having the fact that it gives better healing and a more timely sort of thing to it and other people is always good. Because the amount of times I'm seeing, especially in high-level play, where you round the corner after, like, you've done damage to someone and they've been healed and that heal goes over quick enough that they essentially survive another set of damage for nothing it's problematic at the, to say the least like i'm not i'm not i'm not a hater or anything like that but i the amount of times i've seen it on like other people's streams where they like they try to especially seems to be a thing against jet players as well like like you peek out and you see jet in a stupid spot and she goes for the orb shot and you tag her right she misses the shot and she dashes out, but you, your tag on her is less prevalent for two reasons. Like you obviously should be able to kill her because of the like the crappy spot she was in in the first place, but she's dashed out. Right, the safety of the jet player is huge. But then you've got the other problem where like a sage would just heal that jet player, and then you'd have to go back and do that extra work, and that can still hinder the gameplay. And that's where utility shouldn't be really overtaking the state of the game. It, do, it might seem niche, but if it happens common, like commonly enough that people are actually starting to notice it, it becomes a very large issue. And then you couple that with the rest of Sage's kit, and we get issues like this. So, yeah, the slow orb. Size of it, the slow orb area is reduced by 30%. Now, truthfully, I agree with this. This is probably the, I agree with this more than I care about anything else in the kit because the fact that this covers so much area, there's no like counterplay to this in the sense that if you're going for an early push or if you're trying to be aggressive and that plot, that path is just completely like wall, like just slowed down. It makes sense if you're only just covering the choke, but if you're covering the choke and then like another 10 meters in either direction, just because of the way it spreads out, it's really awkward. Like I've noticed that on some occasions where like, if you actually like place it down close enough to an edge, it'll just loop the corner and it'll just suddenly like cover up part of that entryway as well, which means escaping like that situation is not particularly good. The idea that they put that it's unintentionally covers a lot more ground than it should be if it's aimed properly I don't know if, it, if you're calling it a, an exploit or a glitch, like, to that level, but it definitely, like, it definitely 
I'd call it a good use of ground hitbox textures. Let's call it that. Where some sections of the floor are just suddenly covered extra because like there's a box in the way. And like if you aim it well enough against the box, it spreads out further to accommodate for the amount of boxes that it would actually have. Like imagine like a set of tiles on the floor, right? And you've got, and it will just cover like all these extra areas to make up for the fact that it doesn't cover what it normally would. That spread and the amount that like it slows people down just makes things difficult. I'd have argued that like you could you could get momentum back if you actually like you know were able to jump past it or jump over it or use bunny hopping effectively, but that was changed during beta, so it doesn't really make life easier anymore. You're just intention you're just kind of stuck generally, and that's what it should do, but it shouldn't cover that much to the point where even escaping that and getting collapsed on shouldn't be a thing. And in unorganized play, disorganized play, that's very punishing. So I can see why that's a thing. Barrier Orb. Cost reduced from 400 to 300. A fortifying barrier. The wall now forms at 400 health. And then after a three second delay, the wall becomes fortified to 800 health. I hope it's to increase the counterplay on barrier and reduce the strength of the wall during reactive use. So again, this is the thing about, oh, Sage player makes a mistake and then is going to get rushed on. Or just Sage player sees someone coming instantaneously, put the barrier up, completely mute as a push in almost every situation. So I always had this problem, right? I didn't care for it on a standard round, like in a buy round, because you could just like bulldoze the wall. Now it's going to just happen much easier. My biggest gripe with the barrier orb originally was just always pistol rounds. I just absolutely detested how it worked on pistol and how much like work it gave for, like how much work it required to just get brought down i would totally be okay with this on a pistol round but on a buy round this gets very very tedious if this is a reactive use of the wall you're going to put up the wall that's going to get mowed down and then you're going to get like absolutely slapped up for it so you got to be a little more proactive as sage which is a good thing like it, it means a decision is is required to be made it's not just brain dead oh there's people coming just going to put this wall up and who just calm that like that's that's not enough like to be a counter like a counteractive thing right and I, I get that that's in place and that's a good thing. We should work with that. But I would be happier in the sense that you like you have to actually like do something in the state of X and Y is a factor. Can we counterplay like a section of it at this particular point in time? Yes, no, so on and so forth. So again, barrier on pistol ram was a big problem. Glad that that's being fixed. However, yeah, at the cost of just getting absolutely bulldozed in buy rounds. Oh boy, it's going to get nasty. So, yeah, it's going to be a bit, going to be a bit how you going. But at least the cost is going down, so it doesn't feel so awful. <laughs> Which, again, uh, I've got to think about the rest of her costs. I don't know if this actually creates anything in the early game that you might actually be able to work with. I think by default you actually... I think by default you can still buy your utility anyway. Actually, I just need to double check that. Hang on. Let's drag this over here while, I'm, uh, while I've got this on screen. So... Just hit the wiki quickly. Just remind myself quickly. Sage costs. So barrier orb now 300, slow orb 100. So on a pistol round, for instance, right? You can now buy the ghost and the the barrier orb as as standard, right? So that's cool. Or you can do the the half armor plus the barrier orb and a slow orb. So now you actually like do get the bit extra for it. So there is actually good uses and reasons for this to be like existing in the early game it won't affect you like i said it won't affect anything in the mid in the mid game like when there's actual guns involved just purely because of the state of um like rifles just chewing that shit up if it's cast early but i think i think it's a good change that benefits like it benefits two people more than anything else right it benefits people that are playing aggressive by default which kind of should because you shouldn't just like get st stalled out of a game like triple triple sentinel play might become a thing with the state of like killjoy and cypher 
And we were worried about that being a thing by default. Like from an analyst perspective, I was worried about that becoming a thing. So I'm glad that this is being like sort of headed off at the past before it became like a big thing. But it also helps the spectator. Like I can't, I can't imagine any universe where a spectator is happy with, oh, action's about to happen. Fuck yeah, let's go. And then suddenly Sage will... fucking snooze fest and a half where you're like yep this is totally going to happen and sad face but like, don't get me wrong there's been some great uses of the sage wall and i totally rate it but oh there have been some moments where i'm just like Ugh, fuck it not interested not keen not even remotely <laughs> but yeah that's uh that's about enough for sage but i think overall this helps the health of the game Especially when there are other characters coming in that are like more defensive oriented and the synergy there is quite painful. But I would say that it is a bit scary if you're a Sage player and you want to be aggressive and get that heal back. But the truth is, overall, healing shouldn't be in a, an FPS of this level, like a tactical FPS, just purely because of like the shit you're expecting to see. So I'm glad that this has been like... Like I said, this could be headed off before it becomes a big problem. And I hope that any, if there are any other like healing like amounts that come in in the future, they follow this sort of pattern where it takes time for it to be useful. And if you don't act upon that, you're not proactive into it, then you should be punished for it, which is why they get the, the full extent of the heal out of it. That's cool. But yeah, it shouldn't just be like, oh... I've been I've been tagged for a few hits because I stood in a stupid spot. Oh, I've got this sage shield. Whoop de fucking d. The end. Like that shouldn't just be a thing. And I'm glad that that's gone. So yeah, Killjoy, how aptly named. <sighs> Nano Swarm added a brief wind up before the damage begins. Good DPS reduced from 60 to 40. Better visual effects have been added to make it easier to spot the grenade on the ground. Stealth audio range has been slightly increased. I think that should be a fourth line, but that's all right. But yeah, stealth audio range has been slightly increased. So we can actually now hopefully counterplay into this bloody Nano Swarm grenade when it's around the point or at least on a on a choke because truthfully this is the most busted ass ability that anyone has an activatable molly molly that you can use at any point in time from any range much like cypher cage that's crazy but yeah has been a terror to play against it's meant to be a strong stalling and post plant tool but it's currently dealing far too much damage and players unable to engage in the desired counterplay. so as far as we're all aware and we all knew it when it came out that there, there was counterplay impl implemented into the into the ability to make it like easy like the idea is that you're able to remove it and that you're able to sort of figure out like that it's there or you're able to at least get out of it in most cases however the problem is that the damage uh, application is instantaneous so you got absolutely ruined every single time it was there and plus yeah it wasn't even used to just like cut off areas it actually just does more for the fact that oh if there's a defuse and you don't actually recognize that it's there you don't even have to like start or fake a defuse and they can just activate it the moment they realize you're there and it's and you're automatically fucked that's not cool <laughs> that's not fun so i'm glad that that is in place. I hope that the stealth audio range gives you the opportunity to actually hear it before you come into like basically what is what was essentially considered just the kill box <laughs> at that point because you just cop this damage instantaneously without being able to react and that's very problematic. Like even with good reactions, you would still cop about just about 60 damage. There's no, that's not fun at all. So the fact that there's a wind up and the fact that you can probably hear it from a little further away is good very good so i'm glad that that's being that's been addressed and it's been addressed quickly because like i said if we're going to go into these games where you have extra sentinels and with maps like split in place where like there is a lot of just really egregious amount of defense siding on some of these maps this is the problem right like you're actually in a like in a in an issue where you're going to get like completely clapped up by all this utility and we we're trying to avoid that i hope we're trying to avoid that so the fact that this has been headed off right early on right right after her release is good turret no longer revealed by sova's recon bolt i mean cool probably i mean i get why but like truthfully once the turret spots something it's just a giant pain in the ass i would like if the part if the turret was easier to kill at least if you have a pistol. I don't think emptying an entire sheriff clip into a turret and it not dying, just like, 
I don't know. Maybe I'm just personally biased against it, but I've just had a lot of issues with dealing with the turret on pistol rounds. More effectively shoots at an enemy's last known location. So what we're, what I'm assuming is it actually like is capable of just turning to an area, shooting at it, and not having too much trouble. So cool. But yeah, these are just quality of life changes. And plus, yeah, re the thing about Sova, Sova kind of counters every Sentinel, but unfortunately Sova is becoming more and more of a must pick just purely for the amount of information that he gives. So I can see why this has been like removed from the thing, because the obvious idea is that, oh, there's a turret there, we just don't go here. And that, and like having the shock factor of where a turret is placed kind of helps because you well obviously if you know where it is you can either just avoid it or just pre-fire it out of existence so that kind of like gets problematic for a killjoy player so i guess that's cool but yeah like i said Sova being that kind of character that just reveals everything without with minimal effort as long as you know like the lines <sighs> how could you not be like worried about it you know so yeah viper oh boy we have to buff her again because she's still not good enough what a freaking sad day all right toxic screen can now be placed during the buy phase of rounds through spawn barriers now i don't know for sure but can you actually see it that's the part i'm curious about anyway toxic screen now goes up faster along its full length once it starts to form so yeah the speed change is useful just purely because it gives you the opportunity to actually get things happening quicker because the problem is the moment the setup actually came through, you were immediately noticeable, like in every sort of way to the enemy of what you were trying to do. So it kind of became very, it, it, was, a bit, it was a bit irking. Now, <clears throat> it says that this change should allow Viper in many situations to go to a wall pre -place, placed pre-round and then join her team before the barrier drops. To create uncertain or create uncertainty about a location when the round begins, increasing the speed of the wall should reduce the sorry, the wall rising rather should reduce the awkward period that occurs after it starts to rise, but is covering all the angles Viper and allies would expect. Because compared to obviously like Phoenix, for instance, where he just kind of throws it down, just goes and just comes straight up, that's very useful for that sort of thing, like what it's made to do. But obviously the problem with Toxic Screen is that it has setup time and then it takes time for it to come up. And it's just like, that's 10 seconds of <sighs> just waiting for too long. Just, <laughs> just too much waiting, too much time. And like, this is supposed to be a fast paced, oh, slower paced compared to other games, but like a fast paced FPS, right? Where you actually want to do executions and they work perfectly, right? Now, I'm, not nuts right but this says through spawn barriers does that mean the enemy can see them i assume not because that would just kind of give it away but if you can still place it like in an angle and like you know where it is does that mean it just comes down when the thing starts because that's cool i would like to see like this more in action when it comes around but i i would like to know if you can place it through spawn barriers will the enemy see it i assume no or is it do you just place the line there and then it just comes down when the barrier comes down and therefore you just know that it's there and you can just like get the setup happening from the other side of the map because if so that's perfect i'm totally cool with that because it's not a gigantic dead giveaway anymore that's a great start and yeah not waiting for the toxic screen to go up right across the line so if you place it on one side of the map and it goes up along that side of the map you gotta wait for it to get to the end before it does that and it's like eh, shitty very annoying very bad timing but yeah <clears throat> decay on all smoke abilities no longer affects allies this is mainly targeted towards viper's pit and should help reduce some of the unintentional collateral damage she can cause to her team while also opening new strategies for playing around her ult as a team so this is the thing right this is one of the biggest issues when you are playing with a Viper is that if, you if you're in a small site or a site that is like very sort of cramped in and you're trying to hold a corner, if Viper's pit interacts with you in any way, you just start decaying and you can get pre-fired or raised at any point through any of the like places. With and that's bad, right? And for, and since like Killjoy is in the game now, she can just chuck her swarm grenades into the smoke. It makes life very difficult for you, the player, if you're just going to just cop it with the low visibility and everything that's there. So this is a good change for your teammates and it makes like, it makes life much easier for like, playing around that now it only exists to really stifle enemies from coming in because naturally they will start decaying so i'm cool with it and then 
the traps that are available for a viper become more useful because they yeah they don't affect your allies as much so that's good i'm very very happy with that because uh, having a Viper in his inn was basically a detriment because there were just too many situations where it's like, well, if Viper Smoke goes here or Viper's Pit goes here, there's, we can't even go in as a teammate. It just you basically just have to risk it and just go into it to see what you can what you can do to help the Viper or just like, expect Viper to just solo carry inside that pit. And that's just not going to work. The area of Viper's Pit is now shown on a team's mini map when it's deployed. Yes, please. <laughs> just a small quality of life change very helpful very very much here for this i'm cool with it all right breach my favorite character <sighs> note these are not all the potential breach changes we want to do but as part of our ease in intentional balance philosophy we want to be measured stay tuned for more potentially cool I like the riot isn't going out out of their way to like completely bulldoze this. I like that the the dev team for Valorant has got limits or ideas or a plan, whereas opposed to the, the dev team for League, where they just seem to be shoehorning crazy ass changes into the game and just saying, "Well, fuck it, you can deal with it." So yeah, getting a bit nutty, but I'm glad we're at least on a plan where we're like you know working towards it it is a bit awkward that like obviously we've had to wait this on for like vipers changes for instance or we're not sure what to do with breach but hopefully at the very least some changes that we're looking into will at least give us like the players a good idea of what to expect and it won't egregiously like change the meta instantaneously like it won't just like hugely affect like things that are going on by making such crazy changes so this is good now flashpoint off-screen flashes now match the behavior of other flashes in the game and apply a minimum amount of flash more aggressively good because it was really annoying just like trying to go for it and you like believe that you've at least caught someone off the back of it and you just get nothing <laughs> charges increase from two to three yes please Reduced wind-up time from 0.6 seconds to 0.5 seconds. Now, if the sound mimics that, then that's cool. It'd be kind of awkward for, like, both sides, but yeah. Breach should be a choice pick in offensive entry and breaking utility. While the Flash's power was pretty good, too few charges were holding him back on being able to provide value for his team. Considering he needs teammates to capitalize on his Flashes, this should be... They should make up for that cost by simply having more of them. It's good. And considering they're 200 bucks a pop, it definitely gives you an opportunity if you're a support player to like properly bring in players into this. Like if I'm personally playing Breach, I feel really awkward about using the flashes and not being able to sort of react on my own angles to work out with them. So having having the ability to sort of like send in people for an entry and then send in people for a retake or something like that as well is always good. But I always hated the idea of like not being able to be aggressive with them on defense side because you only have two and like if you waste one or waste both you don't have anything for the retake and it gets very very painful <sighs> and like it's not as if like breach is a fragger like you're not really getting a lot of extra utility out of it you're pretty much designed to help people from medium to long range just get things done but you need walls that's like the biggest the biggest detriment is that you obviously need walls now it's understandable why for balancing choices this is in the game but because things like you know pop flashes pop uh smokes and that are just not like not existent which is a, an idea that like obviously gives flavor to the game obviously makes things a little bit difficult like in the in the balancing stages like for things like the operator and stuff like that but this will definitely help for like some maps that have like really annoyingly enclosed areas so you can actually like work on getting more flashes out and plus since they wind up faster it makes life a lot easier when you're trying to like get the setup happening because I think by the time it comes out, the average player, especially at high level, can just actually like react to this relatively well. Or at the very least at high level, like turning away from these flashes is quite, it seems to be better, especially for those young gun aimers that are like hella good on reaction. So yeah, good change. All right, Rolling Thunder. The de detonation delay between blasts has been decreased from 0.3 to 0.255. Now, I'm cool with this purely because this is actually really easy to react to when you see it coming at you. So the problem with this is that if you try to cast this at, at medium long range, like it's very easy to just react and get out of the way by the time it gets to you. But if the detonation delay is smaller... It actually will make things a little difficult in, in regards to just stepping in and out of it. So there, there is kind of a way at the moment where 
if you see it come towards you, you can get in front of the one in front of you, step forwards as the other one's coming past you and be almost minimally affected by it if you maintain your momentum without too much trouble, which is very problematic if you if you look at it like from an outside view. But yeah, this honestly, the big thing as well is that you want to be able to follow the rolling thunder into the point if you're trying to use this aggressively rather than trying to use it to just knock away like bomb defusal. So yeah, this needs to be a thing for proactive use or else it just becomes a really like lackluster comparison to Brimstone's alt where like you just use it to just take away areas. Whereas Brimstone would more than likely just disintegrate someone in there. <laughs> but yeah, concussion now descopes players and prevents rescoping. My God, I could not be happier reading this change. I always hated the idea that like, if you were at least somewhat used to like the way concussion works, that you could still hit the op shot on somebody pushing you if you hit them as breach. I hated it personally because it just, as a personal thing, like if I know where the op player is holding like line wise, or I know the lines and I just go for the stun, and they don't even move because they're just like, oh, look at me, I'm Jet. I <laughs> just hold scope on this line. Someone walks into it, gets hit, and then dashes out of it. Or if you miss, it dashes out of it. Like, it doesn't, it, it never felt like you were really putting a dent in an operator player by a mile. Like, it just never felt good. So I'm glad that this is actually now put in the game. It makes sense thematically as well, because I mean, it's a fucking concussion, dude. Like you should get dizzy from trying to look through it. You shouldn't just be able to hold steady on the line and just go from there. So I'm cool with that. I'm down with it. I like the look of these breach changes. Hopefully there are more to at least what I want. Like I want some charge up changes to the E, to the, uh, the, I always forget the name of that bloody ability. Crip. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want the delay on the abilities to be lowered. I feel like they're just way too easy to react to in every single way. So the fact that they're, chest they're testing that with the ulti, good sign. If it's less egregious, they might they might change the delay on the on the E ability and then hopefully the wind up of the of the C ability, which I'm just forgetting the names of all these freaking abilities right now. Not good, yo. <laughs> Oh dear. Well, yeah, you know what I mean when you listen to it, right? You know exactly what the abilities are. You don't need to know the names of them, right? I can't be asked reopening the wiki to check. The names The names are unimportant, yo. <laughs> anyway. Sova! Updated that This isn't even a... What? Updated the physical and service cape so it should wiggle outside his hitbox less frequently. I mean, cool. Not that anyone... I mean, maybe this is a confusing thing, but who cares? Polish work on servers 1p hands to bring them up to the fidelity bar of the rest of our agents. Eh, why is this even in? This should be in the bug fixes section or like the, the part at the bottom. This shouldn't. This doesn't need to be here. This isn't a change to Sova. At least not a worthwhile one anyway. Anyway, weapon updates. This is the shit we're waiting for, yo. This is what we're waiting for. All right. All shotguns aim punch update. When getting headshot by a shotgun, the aim punch will be lower than all other weapons. Truthfully, I'm down for this. It's the most annoying thing, just getting, like, corner-rounded by a bloody judge and just losing, like, you are essentially guaranteed death because you are looking at the freaking sky before you even get a chance to react to anything. So I'm cool with that. All shotguns tagging tuned for targets beyond 10 meters. Hitting an enemy past 10 meters will apply a different tagging value to them instead of standard tagging. So the new tagging value is 30% slow for 0.5 seconds on a smooth curve going back to normal speed. The goal of these changes is to improve the feel of playing against shotguns to ensure that they don't end up doing odd things. For example, tagging or aim punching people from longer than expected ranges and then a teammate ends up killing someone who is debuffed or makes it hard to fight back against a weapon that should be deadly up close but fairly non-threatening outside of its effective range. And truthfully, against the judge at medium range, being actually like randomly like is it like caught out or just sort of stunted by that, Especially if you're like on a half buy and someone is able to just take them out for that, that's really annoying. And like the fact that the judge actually like is starting to really take precedence over just the majority of close range guns. I and mean, I'm not talking about like it's taking advantage of over rifles, but it is looking better than the Spectre on some occasions in close in close to medium range, just purely because 
it's an auto shotgun that has almost zero like limit limitations and you're able to just like i said with the aim punch that was in the game originally and with the amount of like slowing and screwing up that it was doing unless you were a jet you were not getting out of this so yeah this was a change that needed to happen purely because there were just too many annoyances about it and hopefully some damage notes are in here too. So yeah, first fall off range reduced from nine meters to seven meters. Update headshot mode. Oh, this is the shorty. Hang on. Yeah, first so first fall off range reduced from nine to seven meters. Updated headshot multiplier from three x to two x. Now the same as the judge and Bucky. Dead ass. On a fucking e like if you're an eco round and you have a shorty and you walk out and you absolutely blast someone front on, I don't really think it's cool to be able to one hit someone through a shield with a gun that costs 200 credits. That's crazy. Our goal is to make sure users work a little harder for the kills they get by requiring them to be a tad closer to their target. Dead ass. If we are not essentially kissing by this point, you shouldn't be able to effectively neuter me around a corner. So I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that change. Especially like a 3x multiplier on a 200 cred gun compared to that. Like the Bucky is so freaking bad by comparison, by the way. And yet the shorty and the judge just absolutely are destroying people. Like it might not seem like much like in a pro like scene, but you are seeing judges bought in pro meta just for like the sake of e like ecological, not ecological, economic rather economical structure is <laughs> like, if, if you need a buy of some sort, like a judge is a good choice. To the point where like we've literally had to nerf shotguns in the air shotguns on jet <laughs> and just straight up like just everything that goes with it so that's nutty on its own just so you're aware but yeah so i'm glad that that is the case now Judge, price increase from 1500 to 1600. So, desire here to see if giving the judge a little hit paired with the other shotgun traders moves the needle when playing against this gun. We'll continue to mon monitor and make other changes if necessary. So, again, the shotguns change, hopefully, with the range change, should be the biggest thing that affects the judge nerf. The cost change, not really caring personally. I don't think, like, I think cred usage in general, it's not a humongous, like, what's the word? It's not a really, it's not a gating factor, truthfully. I don't think creds in this game is particularly limiting compared to CS. I feel like my, like economic management is a little easier in this game comparatively. And I feel like just by default, balancing around money is, it, it's doable, but it's not, it's not as huge as it would have been in other games. So I think this is okay to start with, truthfully, because you've got the hitbox changes and the aim punch changes for that. So I'm glad that that's in place. Hopefully shotguns don't become as like, it will, sorry, will not stand to be as egregious as they are currently. So that's a good sign. I'm definitely down to see where it goes. Now, a vandal buff about fucking time. <laughs> Increase firing rate from 9.25 to 9.75. Increase damage from 39 to 40. Now, the one point of damage doesn't really affect too much, but there are some niche circumstances where it might be a thing, especially when it comes down to things like healing and or um, like uh, penetration and stuff like that. So, you know, there are some things to work with there, but not huge ones. Um, but the firing rate is the one thing we really wanted to see, like comparatively, because the... You're, you've got five less bullets compared to the Phantom, but the firing rate is so slow. It doesn't actually feel like a gun that you can pressure with in close range. It, that's why the Phantom is just better in almost every situation because the fall off range of the Phantom isn't high enough to actually like, or low, wait, low enough rather that you like would get less damage compared to the Vandal at mid range. So, and with the firing rate difference is that you can actually pressure out more targets or have spray transfer in a better fashion for the, from the Phantom than you ever would from the Vandal. So they want to bring the Vandal in line, closer competition with the Phantom. And they're not far, they believe they're not far off in competition. Hope these changes will do that. Now, I truthfully believe outside of like, I think the fire rate is the good, is a good place to start. Like without just going crazy on the damage, which they shouldn't do because it would just make the gun insane i think the fire rate's a good place to start because i think the biggest thing right outside of the one tap like lovingness that you get with this gun 
everything else that you use the gun for compared to the phantom is just niche well not niche but like it's weaker is the better way to put it so i think the firing rate definitely brings it into a good spot where you don't feel so bad about taking a close range fight trade like a, to a trade because if you like if you walk up to someone they've got a phantom and you've got a vandal and you both spray around the corner for the for your entry right and it's not an instantaneous headshot then you lose because it's the like the five bullet trade is faster from the phantom than it is from the vandal by default but even the damage value while it may seem nice is not like enough to sort of carry it over the line so that was the biggest issue when you were comparing the two guns so hopefully the vandal will make up for that and i feel like at mid ranges it might do but it's definitely down to see how the pros feel about uh, using this gun generally I think like I said I still think in most situations the phantom has just carried its weight purely because of how consistent it is and how much like better as a gun it has like sort of worked out overall which has always been really helpful to sort of compare it's like it was also highly like if you if you're comparing it to CSGO which I know a lot of people are going to do the only thing the only massively like gating factor that you had to deal with originally was just that they were side based you know like T's had the AK and uh, CT's had the M4, right? Those sorts of things were the main, like, sort of balancing limitations and factors that you were thinking about when it came to does X, like, weapon on X side for X map or XYZ, rather. I should be using the factors correctly. <laughs> but yeah, like, are those factors the big change or limiting factor that you're worried about? when you're balancing a particular gun for a particular situation whereas in valorant both guns are available no matter what side you're on so you have vandal and phantom available but the idea was that they had to fill out specific niches like specific requirements but the phantom just kind of covered all the bases for a very little hit compared to what the vandal would make up for so which is the one taps at long range that's basically all the vandal had in advantage but if you want to one taps at long range you just op because ops are still good no matter what in regards to like any sort of ranged fight but at at close to medium to long to medium long ranges the phantom just outclassed it just purely because of the damage output and consistency that it had with barely a uh barely a con in sight like the pros and cons list the cons were not high enough to ever warrant switching to the vandal now with the pros of the Vandal being upped a little bit, you might actually see this gun a little bit more, but I think you'll might actually, we might start we wading into the territory of feely craft where the gun feels better to use. And that might actually bring the competition closer for some people. So you got some players like in, now I don't want to call like tier one and tier two teams off the bat, right? But if we're going to compare, you're comparing players that are at the highest level right now. So teams like, you know, TSM and uh, Sentinels and G2 and stuff like that. We've got teams that are at the highest tier and the majority of them are buying van, uh, not vandals, uh, phantoms, no matter what, right? It's phantom or op, that's it. But then you've got teams that are just below that. So teams like Envy and stuff like that. And there, there are some vandals in the mix. Now, does that make them a terrible team? Fuck no. But the point is that on a consistency level, other pros are realizing what's better and what's not, and they're working to those strengths quite well. Whereas a lot of people are trying to get the feel of their, their preferred gun, because they obviously do want to make the Vandal work, but there's a lot of inconsistencies or weaknesses that are very much causing the Phantom to pull ahead. Like I said, hopefully this works out. Hopefully there are some things that can be worked into. I, from like, from this <laughs> from just purely looking at the numbers from here you couldn't really make a gigantic choice for it but uh mathematically this could be like a giant change but i think at the very least i want to see a comparison where you take the line like you take the trade against someone around a corner you both miss the head and you just go for the five bullets into the body does can you get it out faster on the vandal and does it feel warranted if so it might be a better choice. Go from there. Because that way, the problem is though, all the maps currently, bar Ascent, really don't have a lot of long range, like long enough range to make you go, eh, could consider the Vandal here. 
the maps don't really have that. Only like the mid area of ascent really has that thing. Everything else is just covered up by the by the phantom in every way, right? Almost every angle that you can think of on most maps, like I said, apart from like the hella long range stuff, is pretty much just covered by the phantom. If you can get like the like the the headshot, like the, either the double headshot or the 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 chest hit head hit like recoil shot, like those kind of makes up for it on its own. So it's not a huge problem. So that's why the, yeah, there's a lot of comparison to go with. We could have this conversation for years, but I'm trying to keep this whole video under an hour for obvious reasons. So yeah, let's just go on to the next one. So hit impact VFX update. Server hit VFX confirms will now spawn in the location of the, of the hit of the character and stay attached to that position previously. I've had issues with hit registration clarity caused by players moving into hit VFX, i.e. a player crouches their head into the space of a body shot VFX, which caused confusion on where a shot landed. This change should make it clear where a shot hit and where on the body, even if a character is moving. So what we're talking about here is like you see someone crouch to like into a, what you would assume is a headshot when they go for that crouching thing, but you're actually hitting the body before they're actually crouching in advance. So you don't really get like huge amount of thing. An additional client predicted small spark VFX now spawns immediately at the game space location of a hit. So hopefully this will improve clarity and understanding of when you're going for it. So if you watch your VODs back, you'll be like, oh, I've obviously just missed the mark here and you're able to work with it there. Now, it says here with a change to a traditional server hit VFX, we want to add additional immediate bullet feedback so you can see where your bullet landed and adjust your aim accordingly. Think of this new VFX as an improved tracer. It's important to note that a bullet is client predicted. Seeing this does not mean your shot is registered on the server similar to tracer. So you're seeing where it's going. So this is the other problem as well. People are going to misconstrue this for hit reg issues, which again, you're not an internet expert. You do not have any sort of like telco management thing. Don't act like you know what's going on here. Unless you're like a coding god and then some. In which case you should be applying for these bloody jobs instead of whinging on the internet. Don't think like for a hot second that there's some crazy shit that you're seeing because oh my VFX and Tracer is actually showing this. It's not. It's showing that you probably may be aiming on the spot but you're not hitting the mark. Adjust the sparks hit VFX coloring and shape adjusted to a more closely resemble blood VFX. Oh, this doesn't matter to us because we don't even have the thing in OS rip. One more place to be able to play with either of these options that feeling one gives better clarity than the other. Well, this is the thing as well, right? Like we'd like to be able to see it better, but unfortunately in OS, we don't even have blood there by default. So what do we get? For cocktails, what we get. <laughs> Just the sides of headshot VFX, where both blood and sparks are scaled down slightly. Especially at larger ranges, headshot VFX would often cover up the head of a player. I agree. Like, there is way too much weirdness going on when you're at range and people are moving around inside those VFX. So I'm glad we can get that away. Honestly, like, if you're a config kind of guy from, like, the old CS days, I feel like in a lot of situations, like, this falls under the idea of clutter. Like, if you just want to see the head and pop it, and like not worry about the crap that gets in the way it's 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 very distracting and i feel like people are going to get into this habit of trying to take the shit away so i'd be cool with that i agree with that with where that would go i like the idea that like this will actually improve clarity to be able to work with and c give a lot of help for self-reviewing i feel like when i watch vods of other players there'll be a lot of good things to talk about when we actually see this come up on screen. So I'm hoping this is exactly as I'm envisioning it, in which case, uh, cool. But if I'm envisioning it wrong, then I may be a dreamer and you can call me an idiot, but I don't care for it. <laughs> um, yeah, so the article on hit registration, as I talked about like out here, there is some good things to talk about. And I do recommend going and finding it for yourself and having a read of it. It does help you sort of clarify for yourself the few things that are going on about it. If you want to see like a video on it at some point, I can go back and like retroactively discuss it like in depth if you like, but uh, I'll leave that up to you. You can let me know in the comments. Um, <clears throat> competitive updates. You can now remake the match. Woohoo! <sighs> if anybody's plays disconnected at the start of the match, beginning of by phase through the entire first round of remake. So we've got the remake option from League now, and there's actually like things to go with it. All connected players on the team can call remake and vote to remake the game. It's required that all connected players agree to remake the game. 
I assume it's on the same team, right? On the team. It does say on the team. So I'm assuming it's just the four players have to do it, which means don't fuck with it, yo. Don't fuck with it. <laughs> Change the potentially misleading verbiage on the restriction measures for players who need to play more unrated against unlocking vet for play. This is better to reflect that Deathmatch and Spike Rush do not count towards unlocking compared to the... Well, there you go. Actrans visuals have been updated. Cool. Don't care. The vote is successfully passed. The game is remade. The match also will not show a match receive all disconnected players not part of the vote will take a full MMR loss for the game and receive a leave of penalty. Where are you? Good. Alright, quality of life. Good observer changes. Can toggle aim lines for players. Can change which team's outlines are visible. Corpse markers are shown when corpses are disabled. Now obey, now obey colorblind settings. So instead of red, you get yellow if necessary, which is lovely. Hockey order for selecting players and observers should no longer shuffle in overtime. Good. Observers should now see the money on the HUD for the player they are spectating. Good. Added a setting for disabling the in-game UI. This would be good for, like, video makers, etc. Added a setting for disabling crosshair, etc. as well. Observers can hide the first-person character arms. Interesting. Observers can toggle team-based crosshair coloring for spectator targets via the settings menu. I mean, red and blue will always help for those particular situations, you know. So team color, etc. So that's always good. Improve frame rate by allowing a wide variety of VFX to be multi-threaded. Examples include Brisbane, Side Space, and Bridges Rolling Thunder. Oh yeah, more FPS. Fuck yeah. <laughs> for anyone who'd rather keep their identity private in game, we've ad added these features. Hide my name from non-party members. Agent name will be used. Hide the names of others in my game who aren't in my party. Agent names will be shown. I'm awkward about this. I I guess that this works if you're a streamer and it helps you like hide those so you don't get spam added with shit. But is it just do you just like just put it out there and it just automatically covers it by default? Because I mean, truthfully, I would just put this on by default so that we just completely neglect anything about it like in league for instance i have my i have all character all player names turned off because i don't care about players i just care about what i see and what i can deal with right that helps me get over any sort of like inklings of issues or anything like that so this is cool i rate this i'm totally down for this i might even turn it off myself <coughs> oh, pardon me all right this should just take effect from agent selected game and we also added the option to hide an auto reject frame requests fuck yeah let's go Hit impact VFX improvements, see dedicated section for breakdown. So you know what I want to know, right? If you're on the front menu, does it actually block it there? Or is it just in-game? Can't wait to see how that looks, but that'll be cool. Bug fixes. Fix the bug where both teams call it surrender vote. The team who called it second wouldn't get the option to vote. Rip. Fix the bug that displayed the act rank tooltip in English when another language was selected. Don't care. Okay. That basically covers everything. So biggest you know what this is actually a good patch i don't think anyone should be mad about anything that's in this patch i feel like this is a good thing across the board in regards to game health and changes to the game in general now the only people that might complain about this particular patch are sage players and truthfully i don't care because healing in any video game just shouldn't fucking exist if they change if they take out a heal and they replace it with something like a like a brief overshielding or something like that cool but I am not for one second give the, around the idea of giving anyone health for anything. I hate it. I only, I only like buy it on Reyna because it actually requires her to kill someone. Therefore, the first time you outplay her, it counts for something. Or if you don't get yourself killed by it. It's like Kavera in fucking uh, in Rainbow Six, right? If you are isolated by Kavera and you get killed and and you get executed by her you automatically should cop out for the rest of your team because it's silly. Same sort of thing applies. Like if Rainer kills you and drains you and drains you, you are automatically going to feel the lurch of it when you, if you're alone from your team. Deal with it. So I'm cool with that. But yeah, I'm actually quite happy with this patch. Feels kind of awkward when I say, hey, I'm actually happy with the way Riot have done things. When you've seen all my League-like reviews, 
I think the philosophy uh, taken on by the Valorant devs is definitely a great, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like great contrast to their league approach. I'm actually very like interested in their cautious nature when it comes to this sort of stuff. And I'm really happy to see where this is going. I want to see more like in-depth work and thought process going into these. I like it. I like where they're going. Um, the only thing I'm awkward about in this patch notes that I, I don't see a cipher change at all here. I was expecting one just given the actual amount of like overlap there is when it comes to Sentinels. But I think the changes to Killjoy do somewhat warrant that. So I'm cool with that for the time being. But yeah, the problem with Cypher is that there's not really a lot that you can really change that doesn't just completely like hurt or doesn't like really hurt him too much or hurt him too little. Like if you take away a tripwire, for instance, it hurts a lot. If you take away a cyber cage, it hurts a lot. If you take away like the ability for them to be placed in certain areas, it hurts a lot. If you take away camera placement, it hurts a lot. There are two. There are a lot of things that it really hurt the state of cipher that might be the reason Riot is holding back, because cipher on his own is not and it's not problematic to the point of reproach. But you put Cypher alongside other Sentinels and it becomes very, very difficult to approach sites. So, yeah, that's something that a lot of people are considering, which I dig. But yeah, we'll see how we go overall. As I'm, not, I'm not at a point where I'm going to just immediately like lose my, lose my mind. But yeah, this is a good start. I'm happy with everything that's in this patch-wise, change-wise, etc. So, yeah. Either way, hope everyone enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed this uh, edition of Patch Talk for Valorant Patch Notes. Hope you enjoyed my insights, criticisms, philosophical discussions about uh, this game and patch. If you do want to see more, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you are interested in getting a free VOD review from me, pop yourself into the Discord, which is in the comments, and come see me. I'm definitely available to do those and add those onto my YouTube at any point in time. No questions asked. So yeah, hope you enjoyed yourselves. My name is Rec9. Love you all folks. And of course, best to you. Bye-bye.